Good evening, friends. I'm Dr. Ajay Shah, and today I'm excited, matter of fact, very excited actually, to take you to our new uh, studio at our house. We set up the studio in our basement uh, this afternoon. Uh, Jay Shree and my wife and Hannah actually helped us to set up the studio because, you know, in two hours, we used mostly our house things. We didn't have to buy anything. Uh, it came out pretty good. You can see lots of books, which I read every day. As you, all of you know, I read at least 200 pages every day. There are some fresh fruits there. There's a water bottle there. You can also see some weights there, you know, some uh, important pillars. We'll talk about it. Obviously, cozy fireplace, lots of uh, flowers, lots of ass, and then off, uh, you can see a clock also. So again, I'm very excited to, uh, uh, to start uh, giving live from this uh, studio. Um, uh, today, I'm gonna start with something uh, which I'm gonna make it a routine uh, to do uh, uh, on most of our lives. Today, I'm gonna tell you what I ate today. I think it's important that we share uh, what we eat and that's how we learn from each other. Uh, I'm still a work in progress when it comes down to eating. I mostly eat whole food, plant-based diet. Uh, that means I eat uh, no animal products, uh, no dairy, actually no cheese, no milk. Uh, we almost have eliminated oil in our diet and we almost have eliminated all the processed food in our diet. Uh, obviously I'm not 100% yet, I'm working towards it. And uh, many of us are actually are, you know, doing our best to progress in this uh, healthy lifestyle journey. So let me tell you what I ate today. And then we will go to our topic of the day uh, once I finish uh, this, my, uh, what I ate today. So in the morning before I went to work, I had a decaf coffee, just a decaf coffee with, uh, with uh, no, decaf coffee with uh, uh, no milk, no skim milk, no cream, no Splenda, no sugar, just a plain decaf coffee. There are some benefits of uh, drinking coffee uh, and many of those benefits are maintained with decaf coffee. So I typically take decaf coffee. Decaf coffee has a less chance of raising your blood pressure and uh, less chance of keeping you up at night. So I always take decaf coffee. Um, uh, and I went to work. After I came back from work around noon, I had a lentil made with no oil and I had it about medium bowl. So lentil obviously is one of the staple diet, staple food in many of the blue zones where people uh, live long, live healthy, live up to 100. So lentil and beans is one of the staple food in blue zone people, people who live long. So I typically always have either beans or lentil uh, uh, typically every day in my diet. So I always have a, a lentil or beans in my diet. After that, I had a two whole wheat toast, two whole wheat toast. Ideally, I like to have a sprouted toast or sprouted bread, but today we didn't have sprouted bread. So I had a whole wheat bread and I put some black pepper on it. Uh, they were just toasted. They did not have any uh, uh, butter or cream or anything like that. Just toasted a uh, whole wheat toast with uh, black pepper on it. I love black pepper. Um, after that, I had a one medium size uh, sweet potato, one medium size sweet potato. Matter of fact, we know now the sweet potato is one of the most important uh, whole food plant based food you can eat. In Okinawa, Japan, Okinawa, Japan, where people live up to 100, live very healthy, uh, almost 60% of calories come from sweet potato. So sweet potato is very important, better than a white potato. Uh, but uh, white potatoes are not bad as long as you don't put anything into it. If you uh, steam or boil white potato and eat it, it probably is a very healthy thing. Uh, many people uh, with uh, diabetes and prediabetes sometimes feel like they should not be eating starchy food. I'm giving a talk on diabetes on June 6th at one o'clock Eastern time. I can tell you uh, eating starchy food in a limited amount is not bad for diabetic. We'll talk about what you should eat if you have diabetes and pre-diabetes, but definitely a small amount of starchy food is not bad. Uh, I, around three o'clock, I had a one a small cup of Indian tea with soy milk, no sugar. So again, uh, just a tea. Uh, I enjoy tea with my wife, so I just had a small tea. Uh, and then around four o'clock, I had a very small, very small rice bread 
uh, which again is an Indian tree, uh, almost healthy, uh, slightly, uh, you know, white rice, so not as healthy as a brown rice, but uh, a small rice, probably 50 calories. Uh, um, uh, after that, in the evening for dinner, I had a very large salad, very large salad actually, with no dressing, uh, just a plain, uh, all different greens in there. And then I had a small mushroom soup. Uh, we should eat mushroom every day. If you remember from many of my talks, uh, Dr. Joe Furman clearly says that you should be eating mushroom every day. He has this acronym called G bombs, where he says you should be eating greens, beans, which I had, uh, uh, onions, which I didn't have, but I'll have tomorrow, uh, uh, berries, which I had, and uh, I, I had so already, I'm going to describe it in a second, and uh, 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 mushrooms, which I had, and seeds, which I had, I had flax seed. So again, G bombs. So I had my mushroom uh, and then I also had a one whole wheat bread uh, toast, uh, same same toast I had in the morning. I, I try to get my, uh, my uh, starch and my complex carb mostly from a sprouted bread or whole wheat bread. I enjoy bread because I exercise every day. So I need some extra calories and bread gives me uh, somewhat uh, higher calorie density uh, for, for food. Uh, then I also had a, Jayshree made a very great tasting, small spicy noodle, brown rice noodle, very small amount actually. She made it for our daughter Saloni, but it was so tasty uh, that I had a very small spicy noodle. Uh, and then I had a one tablespoon of flaxseed and I had a small berries. So my day was pretty fair day, all uh, plant-based, no oil, no salt, no sugar. Uh, so no SOS, no oil, no salt, no sugar and definitely no animal products. So no meat, no chicken, no fish, no, no red meat, no processed meat, uh, no dairy. So I, I consider my, to my day today in terms of eating a fairly good day. Uh, if I can do like today every day, I think I'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm still working on my diet, I must say that. Uh, so if you look at my, what I ate today, I probably had about 45 to 50 gram of fiber. Uh, I have given a separate talk on fiber. Please reach out to our YouTube channel, uh, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah, and, and watch that fiber video, fiber video on YouTube, uh, AJ Shah, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. Um, fiber is very important in, ingredient in our diet. Most Americans don't get enough fiber. The recommended fiber amount is about 30 gram, but most Americans get less than 15 gram. Actually, some Americans, some, my, some of my patients get less than five gram because fiber only come from plant-based food. People who eat mostly animal products, they don't get any fiber. Fiber has many benefits, including obviously preventing constipation, giving you satiety so you don't eat too much food, preventing colon cancer, preventing prediabetes, preventing diabetes, many, many fibers, lowering cholesterol, lowering estrogen levels, many, many fibers, many, many uh, important uh, uh, benefits from fiber. So fiber is important. I had a 45 to 50 gram of fiber. Uh, pretty, pretty happy with that. In terms of exercise, I so far had about 26,000 steps, 26,000 steps. So I, I, I'm on call. So I drove two hours. I spent about an hour and a half at the hospital. So four hours uh, were for the work. But, and despite of that, I came home, I walked all day and I actually got about 26,000 steps uh, total. So again, my day in terms of uh, healthy lifestyle, pretty fair day. Uh, I'm sure I missed some other days. Uh, today, I, I, I kind of planned out my day and it worked out better, uh, but I also have bad days as like all of us once in a while we have bad days. But I think as long as you have uh, two or three bad days a month, probably body is uh, forgiving enough that you probably will not get in trouble. But if you have uh, 10 bad days a month, body will not forgive you and you will get into many chronic disease. So again, uh, try to eat as healthy as you can, try to exercise, at least minimum you can do is walking, add some weight training, add some stretches, uh, and sleep seven hours, which I'm planning tonight to sleep seven hours. Last night on my Fitbit, my sleep was about seven hours, seven hours, two minutes. So I get about seven hours of sleep. My average sleep for 2020 is, I think is seven hours, five minutes. So that's a sleep. That means in bed, I spend about, uh, eight to eight and a half hours. So I'm definitely in bed for eight to eight and a half hours. Um, so then this concludes my uh, initial uh, thoughts, what I ate today. I will periodically do this thing, what I 
eight in a day and uh, tell you how my day went so that way you all can learn from each other's days and many time to be honest with you many time theory and practice is very different a lot of people have a lot of theories in their mind but it's very difficult to put in practice and i also sometimes fail and i think it's very important that we all practice what we learn what we uh, learn from each other what we learn from books so practice is very important theory is also important so let's start with our today's uh, today's uh, topic So today's topic is one of the important, uh, important uh, pillar of healthy lifestyle. So today's topic is one of the important pillar of healthy lifestyle, and that topic is exercise. Um, so again, exercise, as we all know, is very important, very important. We, I call it physical activity because exercise typically means going to gym, or going to health club and exercising. And many times we do exercise in the evening or early morning hours. But in my opinion, it should be the physical activity. So if you are cleaning house, if you are vacuuming your house, uh, if you're doing dishes, if you are uh, uh, doing gardening, if you are shoveling snow in the winter, if you are you know, mowing the yard, then all those things are also physical activity. So you don't have to go and actually go to gym and, uh, and lift the weights and uh, get on the treadmill or elliptical, but you can actually do physical activity for your day-to-day -day, uh, chores also. Matter of fact, if you look at the many of the blue zones where people live long, happy, and healthy, many of them don't go to gym actually. Many of them just do their physical activity uh, on their household chores. In Okinawa, for example, the guard, they do gardening, they go to their friend's house walking, they go grocery shopping walking. So you don't have to go to gym, you actually can do physical activity just by you're doing your daily, daily chores and daily house activities. So minimum 150 minutes of exercise or physical activity is recommended. I actually recommend about an hour a day. Hour a day is must. You know, God gives us 24 hours. We can spare an hour for exercise. Exercise has tremendous amount of benefits. We'll talk about it. So in my opinion, try to exercise every day if you can. Maybe you can take a one day rest, but at least six days per week. Um, at the same time, if you cannot exercise during the weekdays because you got other responsibility, including if you are a busy parent, if you are long hours at work, if you are doing two jobs, then you can actually catch up on exercise on the weekend. And there is a concept called weekend warriors, where actually if you complete your 150 minutes of exercise on Saturday and Sunday, so 75 minutes on Saturday, 75 minutes on Sunday, it has almost similar benefits as if you exercise. So don't think that just doing weekend exercise is not good. Actually, you can do weekend exercise if you are busy during the weekdays. The goal here is to get at least 150 minutes of exercise per week. In my opinion, minimum one hour per day. So that means about 400 minutes, 420 minutes of exercise per week. I at least, uh, I do at least uh, two hours, sometimes two and a half hour exercise per day. Exercise definitely makes you live long. It's been proven for thousands of years. People who are active, people who are physically, you know, doing the chores and going gym regularly live long. Exercise prevents diabetes. Matter of fact, exercise actually prevents cancer also. Exercise prevents heart disease, strokes. It also, also prevents dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So many, many, many benefits of doing regular exercise. So what are the types of exercise? The most common type of exercise is cardio exercise. Cardio exercise is the one where you raise your heart rate from your basal heart rate or your resting heart rate. And the goal is to raise heart rate minimum 70% above your resting heart rate. And you can calculate uh, your maximum heart rate by, uh, by formula 220 minus age is your maximum heart rate. Again, 220 minus age is your maximum heart rate. And you multiply that by 0.7. That's a minimum you should get up to when you do cardio exercise. And if you want to get the maximum benefit, try to get your heart rate up to about 85%. 
So 220 minus eight times 0.85, you should try to get to that heart rate minimum 12 minutes per day. And that probably will require most people light jogging or light running. So again, or getting in an elliptical or swimming heart. So again, raising your heart rate about point about 0.85% of maximum heart rate also uh, will benefit you more. And you can track your pulse either by checking the pulse on the carotid artery, or if you're wearing any device like Apple Watch or Fitbit type device, it can give you what your pulse is. So again, tracking pulse is very important when you exercise. So you know whether you are getting into cardio zone or not, and whether you are pushing yourself or not. Obviously, start slowly, start with a simple slow walk. If you are a couch potato, if you're starting a new exercise program, just start with a simple walking, simple walking. You can actually even stroll and gradually over days, simple over days, build it up to fast walk, brisk walk, and eventually if you can, jogging. Obviously many people because of bad knees or bad hips uh, or bad back cannot jog or run, but at least you can walk. If you cannot walk, get a stationary bike, Stationary bike are not expensive anymore. You can get a good stationary bike at Walmart for no more than $200. So again, get a stationary bike and that will take the weight off uh, from the ground and you'll be able to easily do it. If you cannot do stationary bike, consider swimming if you can swim or consider doing other non-weight bearing activity. But definitely do some form of cardio exercise at least five days a week, preferably seven days a week. Again, cardio exercise is has the most benefit, has the most data in terms of uh, longevity, in terms of prevention of heart disease. So definitely do cardio exercise at least five days a week, preferably seven days a week. So to give you example of how much exercise, cardio exercise, I get it done. These are the, I haven't put the 2020 slide there yet, but my steps for 2018 were about 24,000. So to give you an example, we walk about 6,000 steps per hour. So in 2018, I walked uh, about four hours in a day and I commute two hours every day. I work full time, eight hours a day, and I still was able to manage 24,000 steps. In 2019, uh, I walk about 18,000 steps per day. And in 2020, that graph is not there. In 2020, my average is about 22,000 steps per day. So again, I try to get my steps in. I try to run 20 to 30 minutes per day. Uh, and most of the other is my regular walking. I typically walk around the kitchen when my wife is uh, doing some work in the kitchen. I'm trying to help in the kitchen. I also get my steps done in the kitchen. The other thing I lately been enjoying, many of you have heard about it already, is that I walk and read at the same time. In my kitchen, many times I'm walking with a book in hand and I'm just slowly walking and reading book. And sometimes I can walk one hour and not even feel that I have walked one hour. Sometimes I listen to learning YouTube videos or listen to songs and I just walk in my kitchen. So four hours of walking is very easy, almost like a second nature to me. Once you start doing a regular walking, you will be addicted to it. You will love it. And you will say, when can I go and walk every day? So walking is very important. The next type of uh, physical activity or exercise is a weight training. Weight training is very important not to lose muscle mass. As we get older, both for men and women, we start to lose muscle mass. And that's when the weight training becomes very important. You can do weight training by three ways. You can do it with free weights. You can do it with free weights, or you can do with the weighted machines like at a gym, or you can just do body weight, like, uh, physical uh, weight training. Body weights are just called calisthenics. So again, weight training is very important. Weight, tra weight training actually builds the muscle mass. And when you have a higher muscle mass, you can utilize a glucose or a sugar better, and you will have a less chance of prediabetes and diabetes. It definitely increases your basal metabolic rate because you muscle burns more calories per hour, even at a rest. So that way you will increase your BMR when you have a larger muscle mass and you have a higher chance of successfully losing weight. It can also prevent osteoporosis. In many women, when they do regular weight training, it delays and prevents osteoporosis. So how much weight training exercise you should do? You should do minimum 30 minutes, three times a week. 30 minutes, three times a week. That's a minimum. If you do 30 to 45 minutes, five times a week, that's a very optimal thing. I try to give one to two days of a rest to give your muscle rest to recover because a lot of the muscle mass builds during the recovery. So make sure you give your muscles uh, 
some break on at least every two or three days. If you want to do weight training every day, like some bodybuilders or some people who absolutely love weight training, then try to rotate the muscles so that way your muscles get at least one or two days of rest. So you can do uh, either you can do upper body, lower body, or you can do pull, push, and legs. And there are different kind of schedules for weight training so that way your muscle gets a rotating rest and a break and you don't get over over overuse injury. Plus, like I said, most muscle mass happens during the recovery and rest. So rest is very important if you want to build a muscle. So again, weight training is very important. It can actually also prevent fall. If you have a stronger muscle in the legs, stronger muscle in the back, stronger core, then it will also prevent a lot of falls. And unfortunately, if you fall in an ice or so, your fall will be much more protective fall and you will not hurt yourself a uh, much larger amount. So again, weight training is very important. The third type of physical exercise, which is very important as we get older, is a flexibility training. Flexibility training is very important. That means essentially stretching or doing yoga or Tai Chi type exercise, minimum 20 minutes every day or one to two hours of yoga every week. Stretching and flexibility training prevents falls because your ligaments and your joints are much more flexible. It definitely prevents many injuries and actually it has some role in terms of uh, stress reduction also. So you should, we should be doing stretching and flexibility at least 20 minutes every day. I try to get some stretches done at least five times a week. So again, this was a third type of exercise. So other consideration in terms of physical activity, move every hour, move every hour. We know now, now, actually we say now that sitting is new smoking. Sitting is new smoking. So people who sit eight to 10 hours a day, like a lot of computer programmers, a lot of accountants, a lot of the people who sit at their desk eight to 10 hours a day have a, as high of a risk as if they smoke. So again, uh, sitting should be avoided as much as possible. Move every hour. Most employers, most workplace will allow you to get up three to five minutes every hour. At least get about 500 steps every hour, which is about five minutes. Uh, if you have a Fitbit type device, actually it tracks how many active hours you had in a day. So at least it gives you a reminder whether you move every hour or not. So move every hour as much as you can. Like I said, I love my Fitbit. You can see it right here. Uh, I have it for three and a half years and it tracks my steps. It tracks my uh, flows, uh, uh, number of flights I take. It uh, tracks my sleep, it tracks my physical activity. So Fitbit type device, in my opinion, is must. You can actually buy a Fitbit device only for $69, only for $69. Or you can have an Apple watch, obviously. Um, definitely join a gym. Once gym opens up after this COVID-19 crisis is over, most gyms are now very cost effective. Matter of fact, in our town, uh, Planet Fitness is only about $10 a month. So you cannot have excuse not to join a gym just for $10 a month. And they have very great equipments, great treadmills, great ellipticals, great uh, weight machines, both uh, assisted weight machines and free weights. So you definitely should consider joining a gym when COVID-19 crisis is over. Going to gym is a fun activity. You can do it yourself or you can take your spouse, your life partner, or you can actually go with friends. But going to a gym at least four or five times a week, in my opinion, becomes like a, a habit, becomes like a fun activity, just like going out uh, to a restaurant. That make a gym just like going out for fun. Uh, definitely stand as much as you can whenever possible. If you are in your house and if you are uh, talking to your wife or talking to your kids, uh, consider standing while you are talking instead of sitting. If you are at work, consider standing as much as possible. I have a standing desk at my work and I try to stand as much as possible. Definitely, like I said, have a buddy when you plan your workout, whether it could be your spouse or could be your life partner or could be your kids or could be your friends. Because whenever you have a buddy, you have a high chance of a, a commitment and consistency and definitely you will have a high chance of keep doing it for next many, many decades. Also consider hiring a personal trainer. Personal trainer in, is, in my opinion, is one of the best investment you can make. Uh, we have a personal trainer right now is not coming because of COVID-19 crisis. And many times personal trainer, if you hire a college student who has interest in uh, exercise physiology can be very cost effective. You obviously, if you hire a personal trainer at a gym, it could be more expensive, but be creative and hire a personal trainer who can be cost effective, either a student uh, who can come to your house 
and, and train you. And you can just invest into some free weights or a weight bench and also some other cardio equipment. So again, consider hiring a personal trainer. So again, this concludes the, the important pillar exercise tonight. We are on Facebook. Uh, you are watching it, obviously. Uh, invite your friends and family because uh, this movement is growing. We post about five or six times a day about healthy living, sleep. We even actually post about parenting. We talk about stress management. We post about uh, how, to be, how to be successful in life, both at work, in terms of relationship. So I have taken this big commitment, not just in terms of uh, physical health, mental health, spiritual health, but also in terms of material health, in terms of how to how to make more money, you know, how to, you know, how to, how to essentially be successful at everything in life because it applies to me and whatever I'm learning for myself, I'm just passing on that knowledge to all of you because doing it together with you and with my family is more fun, more chance of success. So definitely invite your friends and family, uh, scroll on our page to look at more, uh, uh, more posts because I know Facebook doesn't uh, post everything on everybody's feed. So scroll on our page at least once a day and see what else we have posted. We are also on Instagram. We have post every day on Instagram, a lot of recipes, a lot of healthy pictures. So get on Instagram, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. We are also on YouTube, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. So reach out to our YouTube channel. We have about 25 videos already, a video on happiness, a video on fiber, like I said earlier, a video on healthy eating, video on sleep, video on uh, stoicism, many great videos. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. And also definitely we are on Twitter. Twitter, we are still not very busy yet, but hopefully soon we'll be posting on Twitter also. So we are on all the social media platforms. Uh, we, I take pride in uh, you know posting every day on a regular basis, as much of an educational material as I can. I'm learning and I want to pass that knowledge to all of you and learn together, grow together and be healthy together. Um, so again, thank you for the great uh, uh, support you have shown us so far. We are in our new studio, you can see it. This will be our new place, new location, uh, new, uh, new way of uh, doing our lives. We'll be also doing some lives uh, in terms of the podcast. We are investing into a microphone, which will be here in a few days. We are also investing into a webcam. So the, the video quality will be high definition, high def webcam, so video will be better. So please stay tuned and uh, I wish you best in the evening. Stay safe, take care of yourself in this COVID-19 crisis. Wash your hands, wear your mask when you go out uh, and keep the social distance. Thank you.